Time to check in with meteorologist Justin Stapleton. Yeah, let's do it. Speaking of hurricane season, it's like Kathy set me up perfectly there. I appreciate that. Uh, this is what the National Hurricane Center is watching. You see this little area right here in yellow. Uh, that's over the next seven days, a 30% chance of development. You say development of what? What am I looking at here, Jay? Well, it's this right here, this area of low pressure that's along this leftover front. This was a front that made it just off of the coast, stalled out, and this happens sometimes. As you'll see, these lows start to develop off of these boundaries. Boundaries. And so what we're expecting over the next couple of days is for this area of low pressure. You can see all the convection just south of there, uh, bringing in some heavy rain across parts of Florida as it hopscotches over into the Gulf. Now, obviously, the Gulf waters are anywhere from 84, 85, 86 degrees. So that's more than enough to get things going. Now, if you look at the tropical storm probability map here, this is for Friday. So the end of the week, we've got a bullseye right near parts of New Orleans. It's only 10%, but notice it is out there. And then, of course, we have another development where it says, OK, well, maybe that doesn't move over Florida stays and gets stuck here right off of the coast of South Carolina and Georgia. So that's kind of the two scenarios that the models are looking at right now as we get towards the end of the week. OK, well, what does it look like on the future track? Well, let's show you everything on the map here. And notice as this low continues to slide off to the east, I'll get out of the way here so you can see it. There's Tampa. That's by Tuesday. It gets a little closer, but notice this high pressure just bobbles back and forth just south of New Orleans. So I think that may serve as a bit of a blocker, meaning that it won't necessarily allow that towards Houston, but it could start to eventually steer that whatever that blurb is over across parts of, let's say, Gulfport, Mississippi, maybe into extreme eastern Louisiana by early Friday morning. If that's the case, then we'll We'll probably see some of the moisture from that break off and start to head west. And that's why I bumped our rain chances up Friday, Saturday and into Sunday uh, because of that and this approaching front that stalls out here across parts of the panhandle. So something to watch over the next couple of days. Don't sweat it right now. Nothing that we need to be concerned with, but we'll certainly keep a watch on it. Do remember the next name on the list after our three tropical storms is Dexter. Right now, though, it's perfect outside. You can see the uh, folks out at the zoo kind of uh, getting, you know, putting a little more dirt and dust and sand down over the uh, elephant enclosure after they saw some pretty heavy storms over the last couple of days. Most of the storms out there today are out across parts of the hill country. Unfortunately, if you're stepping out, we're going to warm up pretty quickly, so we'll get into those details. A few light showers just offshore. Those will start to intensify as we get into this afternoon. And this is the real story, Haley. I was just looking at some of the uh, rivers here, including the Frio River from the north side moving down towards Uvalde. It could get up to major flood stage at about 18 and a half feet sometime later on this afternoon. And look at all of this heavy rain just south of Acuna, and it looks like that's all drifting in that direction. So it was a rough go. Yeah. Last couple of days out there, you know, recovery after for its debris removal, all of the volunteers and, and fire officials and whatnot that are out there, they've had to stop because of all of the heavy rain. In fact, we were supposed to set up some live interviews this morning with our sister station in case at one of the reporters we've had Nancy over the last couple of days and they had to get out just because of the lightning. They couldn't they couldn't put the mast up. Yeah, well, I'm glad they're being safe, but I really wish they could just catch a break. By I know now. just to get this to stop raining so they can get on it. Seriously. All right. Well, thanks for bringing us that information, Justin. And this morning, as we just mentioned, search and recovery operations, they are resuming in West County after they were called off due to more flash floods in Central Texas. So yesterday, some areas saw more than nine inches of rain in less than 24 hours, including, as Justin was just mentioning, that hard hit Kerrville area, and it did prompt evacuations and rescues there. Governor Greg Abbott said on X that first responders rescued dozens of people in San Saba, Lampasas and Schleicher. Those are uh, Sunday was the first time that a new round of severe weather had paused the search since the July 4th flood.